Two hours later. Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Today we're talking about our workflow, more specifically the beginning part of our workflow, culling photos. And we're going to talk about the program that we use called Photo Mechanic and why we use it, and then some tips um, when you do use Photo Mechanic. Yeah, so when I started photography, culling was one of the hardest things for me. It was something that took the longest time, especially with weddings, and it was something mm. that if I didn't do it well, it would end up meaning my workflow took way longer. Yeah. I struggle, I get attached to all the photos that I take, I see all the different nuances of emotion in the, the connection between the couple and I want to deliver them all. Yeah. You on the other hand, when I met <laughs> you, you were so much more ruthless than I was and he was able to really see you totally picked six that look exactly the same. So it was definitely refreshing for me. This video isn't just about, hey, we're using this program. It's also about how do you cull photos really well so that you can increase your workflow. So first off, I wanna talk about why we use Photo Mechanic and not Lightroom. When I first started photography, I used Lightroom to go through my photos and cull the photos and decide which ones I was gonna edit and deliver to the couple or the client. Um, one of the biggest reasons for me, once I was introduced to Photo Mechanic, is it is so much faster. When you put it into Lightroom, Lightroom is trying to like render the files that are in there. Yeah. And um, at first, I just did it for the convenience, and the convenience seemed to make it quicker. But Photo Mechanic is designed specifically just for culling photos, and it responds so quickly, even with raw files. And we even use it to cull our video footage, yeah. which is super helpful. So very large files, um, it goes through super quick. So we're gonna take you into Photo Mechanic. We're gonna show you a little bit of our process. We just got back yesterday from a shoot with Anya and Alex. We shot this couple in their home. They're expecting a baby soon, so we wanted to capture this season of their life for them. So we photographed them. We took almost 2,000 photos between us. We went a little crazy. We just mm. loved spending time <laughs> with them. So what we do is we get home, we save off all the raw files all of them, whether it's a wedding or a small shoot like we did yesterday, all of them. And the reason we do this is, firstly, it's much safer to do that and to store them in different, you know, different places. But mm -hmm. if you only save off the photos that you choose, what if the, um, the bride came to us and said, hey, uh, I saw that you took this photo of me and my great aunt. Can I have that one? You didn't deliver it. And I'm like, I didn't know that was your great aunt. I just thought it was, yeah. and I underexposed it or your eyes yeah. were shut. But I can go back into every single photo that I've saved off somewhere and be able to find that photo. So it's just super important. And for a shoot like we did yesterday, in a few months' time, we're just going to grab that raw, like all raw folder and just delete it and yeah. only keep the chosen ones. So. All right. So a little insight into the way we personally organize photos is, as I said, all of the raw files are in this folder here. So let's count. We have... 1900 right. and so uh, we, we're gonna end up choosing and putting them in this folder then we have a third folder for highlights they're like when we send five or six to the couple mm -hmm. the next day which is what we're gonna be doing now our most favorite our most favorite yeah. the ones that we love playing with ourselves and then uh, final to deliver is the ones that we upload to our online gallery that's when they get you know 800 or whatever for a wedding day we also will have a folder for the photos that we're going to blog yep. and for us because we're YouTubers we also take footage a lot of the shoots we go on so we have one for that and then we also have one for an Instagram story because we often like creating stories with it so that's yeah. a little insight into the way that we organize so let's go straight into Photo Mechanic I'm going to drag all raw and drop it on top of Photo Mechanic yeah. and it will open up okay so I've opened it up and you can see here that we can zoom out and see all of our files. Mm. <laughs> There's so many. Yeah. We like to sort our photos by capture time, not by file name, because we shoot with two different cameras on shoots like this. Yeah, 
make sure if you do sort it by capture time that the cameras you use are on the same time. We've had, uh, we've made the mistake sometimes when we've rented a camera and we've forgotten to check the time on it and it's different from the camera that we've used. So then if you sort it by capture time, they're all over the place rather than in chronological order. Mm -hmm. So just to make this video a little bit easier, I've already gone through the 2000 photos and just done my initial selection. You know probably what you guys do. You just mm -hmm. go through, you choose the ones that you love, the ones that stand out to you, the ones that are in focus, <laughs> the ones that show you know the location well. So that's what we've done. And all we did was we just hit the image, press space bar to bring it up and you can go forward and back. You can see this is in real time, not sped up. It is so fast. It's processing these raw files so fast. Mm -hmm. um, and I've just gone through and every single time I had a photo that I wanted to keep, I pressed one, which color coded it as pink. So I'm gonna hide by going down here to this color panel, hide all the ones that I didn't choose. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense, right? All the ones that I didn't color code, I'm gonna hide. Yep. And now we can see we have 230 photos remaining. And so now we're gonna kind of take you through a bit of the process of the second stage of culling. So we have three stages. The first is just choosing the ones that we love. That, Initial selection. Yeah, that has a, the possibility of delivering. The second one is to really like whittle it down to only the ones that you're gonna drag into Lightroom. Yeah, and, like Athena referenced before, yeah. when we have eight photos that are like very similar framing, very similar depth, you're about the same amount of distance away from the couple or the subject. Those are the type of photos that you don't want to keep all eight. Even if like the expressions are slightly different, you mm -hmm. want to pick like your one or two favorite ones. Yeah. So space bar, I'm going to go ahead and every single time I see a photo that I really, really do want to keep, I'm going to press two, which will color code as red. So I much prefer the portrait of this piano rather than the landscape. I don't like, you know, on the edge here that you can see into the kitchen. So I'm going to keep going along and every time I see a photo that I really love, I'm gonna keep it. I'm looking at expressions, I'm looking at, I'm constantly going forward and back and looking at similar photos. It's really important to be okay with uh, recognizing them as similar, that yeah. they're basically the same. Yeah. Um, see these two? They're basically the same, but she has her eyes open in this one. Yep. Um, always choose photos that you feel like stand out to you it's okay to be like does this one move me does this one like connect me you know so always choose photos that stand out to you of course but if you see one that you know you can bring to its fullness in post post processing then yeah. choose it as well yeah so i'm this is so fast i'm basically i mean it's, it's obvious to me which ones i want to keep you know this one's underexposed but i love their expressions yeah their expressions this one so her good. hand looks funny she brought her hand down it's beautiful yeah her expression gets really soft but she giggles in this one so i'll bring it back to one so i'm just playing around i'm going between one and two uh, two different mm -hmm. stages and when i actually reach a photo that i'm really in love with which is this one i'm actually going to click three instead of two which will color code it as orange I'll move this down. It color codes it as orange and this one as well, I think. I love this one. And for us, that third round is the ones that we're initially going to pull straight away and edit to deliver as highlights. So we yeah. just have this the third round there. But yep. all the ones that are red and orange, we're going to take into Lightroom. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit and I'm just going to go through. It will probably only take me in lifetime about two minutes, but for the sake of you, <laughs> I'll speed this part up. that didn't make it to the second round. So I'll click pink. And now all that's left are the reds and the oranges. So we're up to 97, which is actually ideal because for something like this shit, we were aiming to deliver about 100. I'm gonna literally just highlight them all and I'm gonna drag and drop them into a Lightroom catalog that I've already made. And I'm gonna copy them. And what I'll do is I will put it straight into the folder that I already made. So I'll go down to their in-home 
into chosen raw and that's where I'm gonna put it and I'm gonna name it Anya and Alex in home a little insight into the way that we organize our photos So now it's done and you have all of your chosen files, let's go all. So I have 102 <laughs> because I've already made some duplicates. So now we have our highlight photos, I'm going to be able to deliver them for tonight. So that's kind of basically an overview of Photo Mechanic. I mean it's really so simple, It's that's how simple it is for us to show you. One thing to know is Photo Mechanic is not actually a free program. It costs $150, but let me just say that it's been so worth it. We've yeah. used it for the last four or five years, yeah. and it, it pays itself back in the very first shoot that you book, um, and we've used it for every shoot since, mm -hmm. and so it is well worth the money. Yeah, and I just want to say, I use this every single day. I use it. I use it for more than my photography work. I just use it to call, like, and saw and organize just photos that we take. I mm. currently work for a wedding magazine and I blog for them every day, twice a day. So I, this is like one of my absolute favorite programs on my whole computer and I don't know what I would do without it. So we love that you wanted to watch this video. I hope that you learned something. I hope that you're excited to begin culling in perhaps a new way. And we're just stoked to be educating and finally sharing this stuff. Uh... <laughs> 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 That's the end. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today, guys. We'll see you in the next video.